Economists have recently been sounding the alarm about the risks of fragmentation. But what exactly does it mean? When we talk about geoeconomic fragmentation, we are referring to a world that could divide into economic blocks, whose member countries do business only with each other. This would fracture the existing flow of capital, goods, services, ideas and technologies across borders. Why is this an issue? Well, over the past 40 years, these forces of integration have boosted productivity and living standards tripling the size of the global economy and lifting 1.3 billion people out of extreme poverty. In short, they have transformed our world. But the successes of economic integration have been accompanied by increased domestic inequality. And the pandemic widened these gaps, especially as countries face supply chain disruptions, rising food and energy prices. Looking back, deep divergent forces were already at play before the pandemic. The rising power of emerging market economies, especially China, was a direct consequence of their integration into the world economy. Yet the rise in their economic might was not matched by a similar rise in their financial and global institutional firepower. Meanwhile, tensions over trade, technology standards and security have been growing for many years. The war in Ukraine and the associated sanctions have brought to the surface these hidden fault lines between the underlying geopolitical tectonic plates. Faced with the risk of further disruptions and severe policy uncertainty, countries and multinational companies are quickly re-evaluating the shape of their global production structure. Some countries also responded by limiting exports of food like wheat or energy and other key commodities. In total, around 30 countries have imposed such trade restrictions. More gradual but profound tectonic shifts also threaten to weaken the international monetary system. The dollar is by far the dominant currency for global reserves and payment systems, and will definitely remain so in the near future. But with the financial sanctions on Russia, especially on the foreign exchange reserves of the Central Bank of Russia, the possibility of future restrictions imposed by the U.S. government may lead some countries to move away from dollar reserves, now seen as less desirable. If this trend towards disintegration continues, what are the potential costs? Well, first, according to IMF research, technological fragmentation alone can lead to losses of up to 5% of GDP for most countries. There are multiple channels but an important one is that technological innovation needs scale, and a fragmented world is a smaller and less innovative world. Less trade could also push up inflation, eliminate jobs, and deprive people of food, medicine, and other essentials. Said differently, further fragmentation would represent yet another supply shock, leading to more inflation and less output. This would be on top of the two supply shocks we have just experienced with the pandemic and the war. Bringing production back home and moving away from international supply chains would not only make things more expensive, it would also increase risks with countries putting all their eggs in one basket. But we need not end up there. While there is a legitimate need to build a more resilient and more just economic system, we should still strive to keep our economies interconnected. This will allow us to work together on shared global priorities like raising living standards worldwide while reducing inequality both within and across countries. It will also allow us to jointly tackle enormous common challenges such as climate change or future pandemics. After all, CO2 emissions and viruses know no borders. Finally, as emerging economies become ever more affluent, we need to find ways to increase their representation in our global institutions. An integrated world will succeed with shared prosperity and governance.